Well, good Friday afternoon, friends. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Um, it's Friday afternoon. I hope everybody's getting ready for the weekend. Hope you tune in 9 o'clock Eastern tonight for a special edition of the Joe Boo Sports Report. My man DMV is going to be in the house, and we are going to be doing... A hot wings challenge for our buddy Stuart Morrison, who is fighting cancer. Our intestines are going to be burning. I have a multitude of some serious, serious hot sauce from scorpion peppers to Carolina Reapers to combinations of them from pineapple flavored and everything else. And as we raise funds for my man Stuart, we are going to be burning for you. So tune in, 9 o'clock Eastern, we'll be talking about the Cowboys and burning like crazy. And I may have a special, special challenge. Um, I'm thinking about this. I have to talk to DMV, and we may do the ghost pepper chip. Yeah. We might do the ghost pepper on top of the wings. Just saying. Just saying. Tune in tonight to find out if it happens. So, with all of our nice new pieces here, we, we don't have any free agents. We have all young guys, young pups. And with all of our new free agents and new players and stuff, I started thinking about Jake Ferguson. Jake Ferguson has the number 48. Not your typical tight end number. 48. Does that ring a bell to any of you guys? Any of you? Moose Johnson. Moose Johnson made the number 48 famous for us being the lead blocker for Emmett Smith. But Jake Ferguson is a tight end. Why would he take 48? Unless this was a dual meaning. Here's the problem with the Cowboys last year. First half of the season, the Cowboys were able to run the football, which makes things easier to pass. Second half of the season, we ended up getting stale. We ended up not being able to run the balls effectively. Zeke Elliott was running about 4.7 yards a carry. Second half of the season, more like 3.2. There's a major difference between the two of them. 4.7 yards, you know, if you're chewing up that much, it's forcing the defense hand of saying, we've got to stop them. And when they try and stop them, it opens up the routes. Well, there's a multitude of reasons why the offense failed. Uh, another one is basically Dak didn't have a whole lot of time to throw. Last year we had 2.7 uh, seconds per pass play, which was the lowest time that he's had in his career in Dallas. So that's saying that the offensive line is not holding the guys as long and it's not allowing roots to go ahead and open up and for guys to get open. You know, if you tell a D back, hey, all you got to do is cover for 2.7 seconds, hey, I'm good. If that's a cover for three or four seconds, then it starts getting to be kind of hard. So the Cowboys must be able to run the football. So let's take a few things here and see if we can come to a conclusion. One of the things we heard before the draft was that Semi Fuco was going to be used as a tight end. Hmm. Semi's kind of tall, a little bit light for a tight end, but okay, he could put on some muscle and things. And you were thinking that this was going to be kind of a hybrid between tight end and more wide receiver. I'm okay with that. I love to 12 personnel. But Jake Ferguson, 48. Let me show you guys a play. Shout out to my buddy Greg for sharing this with me. Let me show you something that's kind of interesting here. This is just one play. This is one play here. The, the big red arrow is Jake Ferguson. This is a dive up the middle. Jake ends up getting kind of high on the block but has second effort that will drive the guy down the field. Now watch. Watch Jake. Look at this. Driving, drive. You see, him? you see him driving him? Boom. It's like he's got the guy on skates. Let, let's look at it again here in slow motion. Look at this. Boom. Look at that extension. Look at that drive. Boom. He just blows him right out the hole. Dudes. That's real good. Let's watch it again. Boom. 
pushes his man right on through there. All right, back to the number 48. 48, Moose Johnson, fullback. Dallas Cowboys, not exactly crazy. Mike McCarthy's not crazy about fullbacks. But there is a thing called an H-back. Some of you know what an H-back is. Some of you don't. Let me go ahead and tell you what an H-back is. See, teams, some teams are innovators. Joe Gibbs, when he went to the Washington Redskins at the time, now, that thus becoming the Washington uh, football team and then Washington Commanders after that, who knows what they'll be the next time. When he got to Washington, he was from the Air Coriel School of Football, meaning they threw every down. They were Peyton Manning before Peyton Manning was cool with Dan Fouts. They threw the ball over and over and over again, and they used the hell out of the tight ends, making Hall of Famer Kevin Winslow, Kellen Winslow. He got to Washington. He didn't have the receivers or the quarterback that could do that. What he had was a bruising running back in John Riggins. And instead of having a fullback, he basically took his fullback and made a hybrid between fullback and tight end. Instead of lining him right next to the tackles on either side, he ended up basically putting him kind of in, the, in between, in no man's land, between being positioned as a fullback and being as a tight end. So it was kind of like a diagonal move. So he was offset back, but close to the line of scrimmage. Why would you do that? Well, this would make it easier to go ahead and have him blocking down inside, getting past the traffic, and being able to see more, or for him to go into routes. It's easier for him to be able to go from there, boom, and go through traffic. So he could block, he could pass catch, he could do a multitude of things. And this became the single back formation. They rode this to three Super Bowls. And this may be what the Cowboys are thinking about. 12 personnel was the best package for the Cowboys last year. Let's be clear on that. 12 personnel, which is two tight end sets. You could do this with the Jake Ferguson. And let, let's look again what Jake Ferguson can do as far as blocking. Boom. Boom, 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 boom. Look at that. Boom. He can block. A little bit. He, he can't, is that close to a hold? Kind of got that. Uh, maybe. Maybe not. He can block, and he can also catch. And the key thing for the Dallas Cowboys, I, I got to watch that again. I love that. That is... He's got his back arts. He's got the drive for it. He's keeping his legs. Look at this. His feet are moving constantly. You don't stop your feet. Look, he keeps, look, boom, 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 boom. Drive, drive, drive. drive. Look at those feet moving. Look at those feet driving and pushing and pushing and pushing. It's like he had the other guy on skates. And so when you get a guy who can block like that as a tight end on a tackle, understand that's a defensive tackle that he's rolling out of there. There's a lot of things you can do. Like I said, with the H-back, you can put them in motion and ended up doing a wham block. And as a nose tackle, you hate a wham block because basically you don't see it coming. The tight end's in motion, the ball is snapped, and he's diving right at you, and he's killing you, cleaning your clock out. So this may be the thought process for the Cowboys, understanding a couple of things. Dak Prescott is better, 118 completion percentage on quick passes. That's passes of 2.5 seconds or less. Dak Prescott, I'm sorry, 107, 107. Dak Prescott on play action outside of the pocket is a 117 quarterback rating. That's really good. With an H-back, you can do a lot more play action. And play action, you end up faking the dive. It looks like a running formation, and you can. If the defense decides we're not putting eight men in the box, well, you got two tight end and five offensive linemen and a running back. They don't have eight men in the box. You got an extra man in there. If they do go heavy, well, that's fine. Then you play action it and you go ahead and hit the tight ends real quick screen passes. You know, 
bubble screens. You end up doing reverses around the back. There's so many things that you can do when you have an offensive, excuse me, when you have a tight end who can block like this. And what you'll be able to do with that 12 personnel, as well as having those two tight ends, it's just going to be amazing. I, and I can't wait to see. I'm hoping that we're not just being set up and thinking that we're going to be doing something different, but we're really not. But Jake Ferguson, I like what I see there, being able to block. And that's just one play. You know, and it may be, that may be the best play that he's ever had as far as blocking goes. But that is good technique. And he is a guy who did a lot of blocking and stuff. So with that being said, I'm going to see you guys later on tonight. We're going to have fun with this chip challenge. Excuse me. Hot wing challenge slash chip challenge. And uh, we're going to see where it goes. As always, I appreciate you guys. And I will, God willing, see you later. <laughs> oh, big one. Oh, he fumbled. Oh, he fumbled. Shit. He's still Oh, he. He's going to play slay. Oh, uh, 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 uh,